unrest, coups, and authoritarian regimes. We're either talking about Iraq or France's history. Let's find out today in Feature History. Hello, and welcome to Feature History, featuring 19th century France. I'm going to attempt to explain the politics, the wars, and the many, many revolutions of the period. What happened, why did they happen, and where did they happen? I'll spoil the last one, they happened in France. But for the formers, we'll spend the rest of the video discussing. Logically, we're going to begin our episode on 19th century France, in the 18th century, the reasoning being that to understand the political and social landscape of France in the 19th century, we're going to need to cover the revolution. Yes, I'm sure we've all covered this in any half-competent history class, so I'm not going to devote all of the video to it. But it's still important. Now, to give some background to the background, France was deeply in debt in part to the Seven Years' War, which I'll be sure to do a video on time, and funding the American Revolution. Half of the national budget was being used to pay off this debt. In 1789, France was forced to declare bankruptcy, and to top it off, a bad harvest ensued the same year. The peasantry had little food, the intellectuals began to question the king's divine rights, and the nobility were failing to make any meaningful change. Louis XVI, King of France at the time, called a meeting of the Estates General, who hadn't met since 1614. The Estates General was formed by the first estate, the nobility, the second estate, the clergy, and the third estate. Pretty much everyone else. After several votes, they weren't going anywhere, and the third estate was fed up and declared itself their own National Assembly. Louis was not pleased with this, and so while the National Assembly was on break, locked the door on them. Of course, the National Assembly just gathered somewhere else and found an indoor tennis court and swore the tennis court oath, a refusal to give up until a constitution is formed. Louis responded by sending troops into Paris to crack down on unrest, mainly due to the lack of food. The National Assembly replied by sieging the Bastille. They did this mainly for guns. On August 26, the National Assembly presented the Declaration of Rights for Man and Citizen, declaring everybody has a right to liberty, property, and security. Louis was still King of France, and the National Assembly believed he was essential to a functioning state. So it was looking like France would become a constitutional monarchy. A rumour began to spread that Marie Antoinette, Louis' wife, was hoarding grain in their palace at Versailles, so they were forced to move to Paris by rioters. Now, the revolution to this point had been led by the National Assembly, who, as I said earlier, wished for a constitutional monarchy. It was only radicals like the Jacobins wanting a republic. The Jacobins ran a petition drive and it got quite unruly, so the National Assembly responded by having troops open fire on the Jacobins. The National Assembly, the head of the revolution, was attempting to crack down on revolutionary fervor. The rebels had become the man. Emperor Leopold II of the Holy Roman Empire, which was pretty much just Austria at this point, and King William Frederick II of Prussia issued the Declaration of Pilnitz as a response to the revolution. It promised to restore the French monarchy, most likely by war. Louis convinced the National Assembly to invade Austria to seize their food supplies and quell the threat of the HRE invading them first. This only led to Prussia joining the war on the HRE's side, and when Louis was discovered encouraging Prussia, he was deemed an enemy of the revolution. The National Assembly suspended the monarchy, held a new election where every man could vote, and created a new republican constitution. Louis was held to trial, and by one vote, sentenced to the guillotine. This would set a trend and begin the terrors. 16,000 people were executed as enemies of the revolution during this period. You may remember I said France declared war on Austria. Well, this war didn't end with the king's death, in fact it got worse. France ended up in war with most of Europe, and France won. You can credit this victory to their early mobilization and Napoleon. They created puppet states out of the Netherlands and Spain and annexed the Rhineland. Napoleon also took northern Italy. There were many coups and counter-coups during this time. 
But I've already dragged on, so we'll skip to 1799 when Napoleon seized power and became the first consul of France. Citizens, Napoleon proclaimed, the revolution is established on the principles which it began. It is over. Which is a nice way of saying we just spent a decade murdering each other and getting in wars for nothing.